Congressional Republicans, for their part, today proposed a centrist approach to health care reform, as they call it, a less expensive alternative to the Democratic plan, which would cost somewhere around a trillion dollars over the next decade. The role of religion also rising to the surface of the health care debate, and that is the topic of tonight's face-off. Joining me now, Tony Perkins. He's the president of the Family Research Council. Tony, good to have you with us. And the Reverend Thank Jim you. Wallace, president and executive director at Sojourners, a Christian social justice organization. Gentlemen, it's, it's great to have you both with us. Uh, how in the world is God and politics moving to the center of a, of a debate on national health care reform? If I may, uh, Reverend, start with you. The community of faith should never be involved in the weeds, the policy weeds. But there's a fundamental moral issue here, which are 50 million Americans don't have health care coverage. And a lot of those are low-income families, middle-income families. On the way over here, Lou, I got a voicemail uh, from a friend who said he's only 38. He said, my wife this morning got diagnosed with lymphoma cancer. Now, he's terrified, and yet he has health insurance. Imagine if he didn't have health insurance, he and his wife. So this is, a, this is an injustice. So we have to fight. We have to achieve affordable uh, health care coverage for, for all those folks who don't have it. That's a moral issue. Tony and so Perkins? we won't get involved in all the sure. details of policy, but the moral issue has to be front and center here. Tony Perkins. Well, Lou, there's no question that we have a health care problem in America. In fact, for many families, it's a crisis. But what we need is a common sense approach that will make sure that those who are truly in need will be covered uh, and that uh, our health care stays patient-centered and not government-centered. And that's what's at question here. And I think what we're seeing in this debate is, um, and, and I appreciate what, what Jim says, I agree. Now, I, I take issue with the 40 million. There may be 50 it's really 43 million that do not have health insurance, not health coverage, health insurance, because we actually have 80% uh, in a CDC report says 80% of, uh, of poor children have public health care now. In my home state of Louisiana, we actually are one of the few states that have a uh, kind of a two-track system. We have a public health care system that runs parallel to the uh, private system. And I'll tell you, it is fraught with problems and uh, I, I'm fearful of what will happen if we go to a one-size-fits-all uh, government health care program. Uh, well, but we're not. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry? Oh, that's what's being pushed. That's what's being pushed no, is, 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 no, is, a, is a government really mandated... You no, know, it is. It's no, what we're talking about. Is we, we haven't had health care reform for years because before the debate uh, there's a lot of scare tactics going on. This proposal is about people having choice, choices. Keep your own doctor. Keep your health care if you want it. If you don't have health care plan, you can choose another plan. Uh, so there's choice here. This is not a government that, plan, government control plan. That sounds there's choice here. Well, may I ask, Reverend Wallace, where are you getting your details yeah. on the plan since the administration hasn't put it forward? Well, that's right. Uh, all there are are ideas and bills, but I've heard nothing that's going to talk about a government right. control plan. All the ideas uh, I've heard from everywhere are how we can really give people right. choices. A lot of Americans th th who have insurance, Lou, as you know, they're that working families and they're underinsured. So people that, that aren't getting very the coverage good, they, that they need. That sounds good, but we see through Medicare and Medicaid that once the government pays the bill, it calls the shots. And what we're looking at in a, the, the president's very, very defensive, this isn't socialized medicine, but it would be a single payer system that would ultimately lead up to, and the government pays the bills, it calls the shots, and we end up with a one size fits all. And I don't know if you've ever had one of those hospital gowns, they're one size fits all, and some important things are left uncovered. And that's what I think we have in a health care plan. But none of that's true. That's not what the ideas are talking about. It's talking about <laughs> it, it, it health is, insurance yeah. companies are not, are not insuring people well, with pre-existing conditions. Well, but, so you want to give people a choice so they can get their health care needs. And, that, and, that, and that's true. We need, we need accessibility, affordability, uh, uh, portability, yeah. and, and transparency. And, there, and there's, there's ideas like uh, allowing people to go across state lines and, and create pools of, uh, for insurees that th can bring down the cost. We don't need the government to run it. Well, if I may, well, the gentlemen, let me ask you this. No what, one's suggesting what, that. 
Uh, one of the Go proposals ahead, Lou, you can that talk is being... your show. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, what do you think of the congressional proposal uh, put forward by some that would create a, uh, a health care cooperative, much like rural u utilities? Uh, is this an acceptable public option coverage that uh, within yeah, the... It's an with... intriguing idea. Right. It's an intriguing idea. It, it depends on w how it's going to be managed. Is it going to be managed from a national level? Is it going to be managed from a state level or a community level? And also, Lou, it comes back to the question, of if the government's going to pay, if they're going to pay the bills, uh, or even put in the seed right. money to get these going, they're going to define what the benefits are, and that's of great concern. All right. Uh, but see, of Lou... Uh, let me just ask this real quickly, if I, if I may, Reverend. Uh, yeah. The president made it pretty clear that he doesn't believe he's talking about socialized medicine. But have you heard any proposals from the Obama administration or from Capitol Hill uh, that will, in fact, reduce significantly health care costs, reduce the cost of health care insurance, indeed, deal with the issue of, separately, health care insurance rather than... Uh, control of, as some critics suggest, the health care system uh, per se. There's two, there's two big issues mm -hmm. here. One is, is coverage. We have to make sure, and Lou, as you know, the families who aren't covered are mostly working families. You know, Medicare covers the, the poorest, you know, you, you know Med Medicaid, but the working right. families are not covered. So we have to make sure those 47 million, 48 million, 50 million, whatever the number, that they're covered. Second, we have to contain the, 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 the skywriting costs yet. of health care. We we've just you know, got about a lot of 20 families seconds, who aren't Robert, covered. if you could just... The skywriting, the costs have to be contained. That's a moral issue, too. Too yeah. many people are making too much money in the system, and we have to slow that down. So coverage and then uh, cover the cost. We all need it. Those are both moral issues. All right, Tony Perkins and Reverend Jim Wallace, we thank you both for being here uh, as thank we you. have moral issues to contemplate in what is already a, a fairly, fairly sufficiently complex issue to begin with. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Jim. Thank, thank you, Tony. Thank you.